King Canute, spelt strangely, was an 11th century ruler who reigned over England, Denmark and Norway and he's often depicted in legend uh, as attempting to command the tide to stop, an allegory that, contrary to popular belief, was not about hubris but wisdom and humility. But it is, uh, it is an image which I think is relevant today um, in, its, in its more ridiculous interpretation. The story goes that Canute, surrounded by flattering courtiers who insisted on his supreme power, ordered the sea to halt as it lapped at his feet. And while the sea continued to rise, Canute demonstrated his followers that even a king's power was insignificant against the forces of nature, underscoring the limits of authority. And this tale is relevant when analysing uh, the various modern leaders' attempts to stem the tide of migration, the absurdity of um, figures like Suella Bravo and Priti Patel and Yvette Cooper who reveal their own limitations in the face of this complex global issue. Like Canute's symbolic acknowledgement of powerlessness before nature, the leaders, the policies of these leaders uh, dissemble and are reduced to sand. Migration is driven by global economic needs, humanitarian crises, geopolitical tensions, want, and the simplistic measures or unilateral strategies are as futile as Canute's gesture. It's just words, the uh, distance between words and rhetoric, because these things are not global. The only way forward is a global response. In 2023, Britain experienced the highest year-on-year -year rise in migration among wealthy nations, with permanent type migration climbing by 52.9% to 746,900 arrivals, and most came under family reunification programmes, particularly linked to health and care workers. The OECD report highlighted the scale of this movement and underscores the fact that Britain also recorded its highest immigrant population rates. The Labour Party under Keir Starmer has vowed to implement a controlled approach to migration, aiming for a balanced, for an, for an efficacious balance. But the complexities involved require cooperative international frameworks, rethinking outdated conventions like the 1951 Refugee Convention, establishing uh, a form of consulate on the shores of northern France, on the shores of uh, northern Africa, on the shores of Turkey, where um, applications for migration can begin. Um, we need to we need to manage applications efficiently and start them earlier rather than rely on a home office which has its head in the sand buried in the armpits of um, David Blunkett's absurdity, Theresa May's inadequacy and uh, Priti Patel and Suella Braverman's uh, vicious rhetoric. Without these changes, these immediate changes, which require a concerted global effort, I think a global um, convention, a, uh, it's something that uh, Rishi Sunak should have done. It should have been the only thing that he aimed to achieve in two years or whatever time he had available. As it is, Rishi Sunak will go down in history as one of those prime ministers who achieved nothing. He is there um, as the prop against Liz Truss. That isn't some reputation that's worth having, is it? And he could have achieved something positive. Instead, he listened to the whining uh, moan of Suella Braverman. It's like listening to the roar of the waves, listening to the whip of the wind. It's never going to stop. And it's never, it's never really useful. Um, we, we, we need to take charge of uh, the problem 
rather th and recognized it's a global problem, not a British problem. It's th this, this standalone nonsense is absurd. And without these efforts by both left and right wing figures, um, our politicians, left and right, will continue to mimic Canute's futile, futile command against the relentless sea, emphasizing the need for policies rooted in global coordination and systemic reform uh, as, as, as a wish, not a reality. And we need to make these things real. We need to m move the tide from rhetoric to reality.